Hello, hello. Welcome to my vlog, Millennial Working Woman. I hope you guys have been enjoying my other videos, and today I want to talk with you about a topic that's pretty general. So if you're applying to get your MBA, one of the questions on the common app for your recommenders to answer is, tell me about a time the applicant responded to constructive feedback. And that question gets asked a lot. Everybody wants to know how you respond in a situation, if you're able to take feedback, what you do with it. And I do think it's a good question. But one thing that it does leave out is the details about how that feedback was delivered to the person or who was delivering the feedback. Now, of course, in these situations, you're not going to have somebody that delivered feedback to you that you didn't necessarily feel was coming from the right place and you wouldn't be having someone who, um, you know, made you defensive and you don't want to tell that story, of course. but. You know, there are stories when that happens. And even if you typically respond to constructive feedback well and you love, you know, you love to figure out what you can do to build yourself up and make yourself stronger, everyone does have those instances where they just kind of freak out and they just don't take constructive feedback well. And I want to talk about an experience myself. Um, something that I had a few years ago where I just saw myself change into a completely different person. And because of that, I realized I didn't, I, well, the takeaway from that wasn't that I need to get better at taking constructive feedback. The takeaway for me was that it is so important when giving constructive feedback to make sure you're phrasing things in the right way. So, now to my story. There was one time I was asked to record a 30 minute video, or no, 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 30 second video. Wow, 30 minute would be a lot. 30 second video of somebody I was working on a project with talking about why they thought it was important. So, step one, I went over to them and said, hey, can I record a quick video of you with my cell phone? And like, I, I just have to record it for social media. And the person looked at me and said, well, what do you want me to say? And I said, oh, well, I'm just looking for your thoughts on the project, nothing too crazy, just 30 seconds, it will be fine. And the person said again, well, I need to know what you want me to say or I'm not recording this video. And I thought, okay, hmm, oh, this is harder than I thought. <laughs> so I said, uh, well, talk about the fact that you're really passionate about this and you appreciate the support of people and it aligns with the different values in your life, like something like that, that would be awesome. And the person said, nope, 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 nope. Those are completely meaningless. I need something that is meaningful or I'm not recording this video. So at this point I started to get a little angry. This person understood what I was trying to do and this person just, you know, was yelling at me. And I was like, oh gosh, I mean, I just thought I would record this video, sorry, ah. So, you know, I was angry, but I went to a desk and I wrote down a script, like something very general that this person could then read off. I came back, I probably took, yeah, 30 minutes to do that, and came back and said, okay, this is what I want you to say. And the person looked at it and said, nope, nope, this is meaningless. I don't, I'm not going to waste my time with this. Like, this is ridiculous. Freaked out. And so then they said, you know, if you're going to come here and tell me to do all these things, you can't waste my time. And I'm, <laughs> I'm just confused. And I was angry and I could feel myself getting defensive. And I could feel my blood boiling and all these things. And I was like, wait, this isn't me, but like, what the hell, like, I can't, I can't just say, oh, okay, you're right, I'll try harder. So I totally snapped. I said, look, sorry, I'm not educated in writing inspirational speeches. I have my degree in electrical engineering, nothing involved with writing. I am trying as hard as I can. I thought when I would come over here with my camera you and said, I need to hear your thoughts about this project, I thought that 
you would say, okay, let's do it. You know, how do I know what your thoughts are? This is not my job. I said my job was to record this 30 minute video. And so that didn't go over too well because this person said, Paige, you know what? We should talk. You always say, this isn't your job. This isn't your job. Like you said it twice in that one sentence. And I kind of was like, what? Like, no, it wasn't my job, but I'm not the type of person that doesn't like to go the extra mile, but I'm not the type of person that's going to get yelled at for doing something wrong that like I have, I didn't even know I was supposed to do. I don't think it's too crazy. But then walking away from that situation, you know, there's me and then there's this person. And if this person was the one that was going to write my letter of recommendation, they would say I respond to the feedback poorly because of that instance right there. But what I took away from this was that somehow the way this guy was phrasing everything he was telling me, I was getting super defensive. And therefore we recorded the video, but the outcome was terrible. And we walked away and I never spoke to that person again. So, you know, it's so important how you phrase constructive criticism, construction, constructive feedback, anything, because the outcome will be severely affected. So if we backtrack and if we ask this guy at the beginning of the story to ask me in a different way, and if he would have said, Hey Paige, absolutely. I will totally record this 30 second video. No problem. I know that you understand this project in and out, back and forth, everything. You understand everything about this project. And I want to make sure that my video meets the needs of you. Like I want it to be perfect for what you need. Do you mind writing a couple bullet points of topics that you think I should talk about? I know that, um, you know, you're maybe not super experienced in this, but you are qualified to do this because you're an expert on this project. What do you think? I would have said, Oh yeah. Okay, cool. Like, let me go to my desk and I would have spent more time on it because I wasn't being yelled at and I wasn't being expected to do these things that I don't know. But you know, he didn't ask it that way. And I think a lot of times, um, people don't ask in the right way. And then they judge the way you responded instead of thinking about how they asked that question. And so I give a lot of speeches. I love to volunteer. And especially if somebody says, Hey, Paige, we want to, we want you to give a speech. I'll say, oh, okay, awesome. And if it's possible, could you let me know a little bit more about your overarching goal for the event and how the speech ties in? I want to make sure what I'm talking about fits the needs of your group. I want to make sure that, you know, I'm, like shooting it or God, I should stop using like those phrases because I always use them wrong, but like, um, hitting it out of the park. There we go. I want to make sure I'm knocking it out, out of the park for you guys because you know, you deserve that. And that makes people number one, answer your emails <laughs> and also listen and respect you. You know, you show that you respect them because you care about, their event. You're not just going to roll up there and say, huh, I know best. You're saying, Hey, this is about you. I want this to be about you, but help me succeed too. It's just a different way of phrasing everything. And I think that people overlook the importance of phrasing things properly because you know, the outcomes can be severely different in my story. Yes. I freaked out. I was a person that I never even, well, I didn't even recognize. I've never seen, you know, someone like that again, but that person probably has never thought about it again. And they, and they and other people give constructive feedback and feel like what the heck people can't respond to this, but they're never thinking, Hmm, 
What should I do to make sure I'm delivering a message properly? So at, now, it's, instead of lessons today, I'm gonna give a challenge. So, you know, if you're not only giving constructive feedback, but if you're in a meeting and you're trying to make sure you're phrasing something right, or you're going the extra mile with the way you're phrasing things, um, start off with something like this. Instead of just saying a fact, try to throw in some type of compliment throughout that fact. So that probably doesn't make sense, so I'm gonna give you an example. If you're asked to give an update to somebody about a project being completed, instead of just saying, yes, the project is on schedule, the project will complete in October, you should say maybe, well, yes, the project's on schedule, um, Sarah has been doing a phenomenal job at um, making sure the coordination between X and Y, and something, and Leah has been doing a ton of things that are over and above that, you know, kept us on schedule because without those, we would have been stuck somewhere else, you know, and the project is now on schedule. Something that was probably like a very rambly way of explaining that, but just something that rather than just, yeah, the project's on schedule, take that opportunity to give a shout out and give a thanks and a public appreciation for the people who have been helping you out. And that goes the same no matter what level of the organization you're in. You know, if you're giving that positive feedback to people, it will number one, make it a great working relationship and make that person more empowered to do their job better and help you next time, honestly. But be sincere, you know? Don't be fake and say, oh yeah, I mean, she went above and beyond and the person didn't go above and beyond. But, you know, we do appreciate things, but a lot of times we keep them to ourselves and why not? We should let them out. So number one, it will create that good working relationship. But number two, if there does come a time whenever you need to talk to somebody about something that didn't go so well or something that you think um, they need to improve on because it's bringing down the rest of the team. If you've already built that relationship of support, it's a lot easier to go in and say, hey, like you've been doing just such a phenomenal job with all of these different projects. And I know this one's a little tricky and I know you've been stressed, but I did want to talk to you about this one thing that came up, you know, something like that where they, res they understand that you respect them, you appreciate them, and you're looking out for their best interest. So then, yes, they're willing to take your constructive feedback and do something with it. But if you start with just, oh, you did this, you did this, you did this, you did this, and blaming people when you don't have that mutual respect, then you're gonna have another situation like I had with my 30 second video. So, Try it, try it out, give a compliment to people. Don't waste your voice because a voice is a powerful thing. Use it to make someone feel better. All right, thank you guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy this video.